Oh, good day, everybody. We are going to look at clauses. Um, first off and foremost, if you're finally back from break and ready to roll, uh, that is great. We are going to be going into Shakespeare coming up. So if you have any questions as we're doing things, please get a hold of me if you're confused or don't understand something. So clauses, again, this is part of those standards we have to hit. Clauses go with the idea of phrases and building sentences, and they're part of that sentence structure. Uh, and that's where we're going right now. We Remember, every unit we've started with something, whether it's been comma rules, capitalization, working up the subject predicate into phrases, now we're going into clauses. Eventually, we're going to go to sentence structure. So without further ado, let's look at this and go over it the best we can. So again, we want to continue to improve, okay? Uh, do our best to improve our structure and our command of English grammar and usage when we're writing. Um, now, in order to master clauses, this is why we went over subjects and hammered them a little bit more and we continue to because you need to know what a subject of a sentence is. Subjects are nouns and pronouns. They tell the reader who or what a sentence is about. Hence, our, our English class will be studying Shakespeare's The Tragedy of Macbeth. Who or what is that about? Just ask yourself, it's about the class. Class is a noun, okay? So subjects, you need to know that every clause needs a subject. Every clause also needs a predicate. And predicates are verbs. They tell the reader something about the subject, either what the subject's doing, the state of being. Um, our English class will be studying Shakespeare's The Tragedy of Macbeth. So we get, what are they doing? Well, they will be studying. We have that phrase, that verb phrase there, will be studying, two helping verbs and the main verb, studying. So get that back into the forefront of your mind. And now we have a clause introduced by our favorite clause, Santa. Um, I know it's a little late, but hey, we can always think about Christmas because, you know, why not? Um, the clause is a group of word that contains both the subject, which is a noun or pronoun, and its predicate, hence verb. So clauses need a subject and a predicate, and it's used as part of the sentence. A clause is going to be part of a sentence. It can, depending on the type of clause, be the whole sentence. And we'll talk about that more. So since you wrote the story, we have a subject you, we have a predicate wrote. There's a subject and a verb. So even though it is a fragment, because you need more to it, it is still a clause because there's a subject and a predicate. They went to the store. There's a subject they, there's a predicate when. So they went to the store. Now this is a complete sentence. All right, you have a subject, predicate, that's a clause. Your independent slash main clause, depending on what you read, is what you'll see on your independent clause. It can be sometimes called the main clause. They're the same thing. Those words are interchangeable. All right. So an independent clause, like a person who is independent, stands alone. They don't need any help. All right. So it expresses a complete thought, and it can stand by itself as a sentence. It has a subject and a verb, and it creates a complete thought. They went to the store. There's a subject. They verb went. I understand it. Is it a 10th grade sentence? No, but it's a sentence. Okay, I'm just using it to, um, you know, look at this point and make this point. Flory cooked the dinner. Again, subject Flory, cooked predicate. It's a sentence. It makes sense. Again, not a 10th grade sentence, but it is a sentence in order to show you that's where we're going. Okay, now we can expand on that. But that right there, you have your independent clause. You have dependent or subordinate clause. It can be either or. Um, it contains, again, a subject and verb, hence predicate. Uh, that's why it's a clause, because every clause has to have a subject and a predicate, but it does not express a complete thought. All right, so since you wrote the story, I have a subject, you. When you do it, you wrote, so subject and a predicate, but I need more information. What about since you wrote the story? So the hence, you need to add an independent clause to that. So every sentence needs an independent clause. So since you wrote the story, is a dependent clause. It needs help. It can't stand alone. Same thing with after she found the candy. You have subject she, what she do, she found. Okay, so you have your subject and your predicate, but it can't stand alone as a sentence. It's a dependent or subordinate clause. Now, these are some clues that might be, say they're like dependent clause markers. They mark the beginning of a dependent clause. Watch some of these mark the beginning of prepositional phrases. So you have to look after it. Is there a subject and a predicate that go with this? OK, 
Okay, so a lot of these are ones you see a lot, and also they can be ones that will have fragments. They'll create fragments because people will start a sentence with because, but they won't finish the sentence. They'll start a sentence with after, but they'll won't they won't finish it. Okay, you know after we go to the game. All right, what about it? So look at these. These are some familiar ones, and if you see them, you might be thinking, okay, let's see what comes after them. Is there a subject? Is there a predicate? Um, you know, so they're used a lot. <laughs> phrases and clauses, the differences. A phrase is a group of related words that is used as a part of speech and does not contain both the subject and the verb. A phrase cannot stand alone as a sentence. A clause has both a subject and a verb. A clause can stand alone as a sentence if it is an independent clause. A phrase can be part of a clause. So let's watch this. This is, I think they do a really good job on here. She usually does. I, I think so. Let's watch this. Phrases and clauses and sentences. Oh my. Alashma. Before everyone started speaking in fragments. Where are you at? A birthday. And before all communication consisted entirely of acronyms and abbreviations. There used to be these things called sentences. As a bit of the history lesson, uh, as well as something to help you compose an essay that won't make your teacher's stomach turn, let's examine a sentence and see what makes it tick. As you may already be aware, a sentence has both a subject and a verb. It also has things like a capital letter at the beginning and some form of punctuation at the end. A foreign concept, we know. But those are just the basics make a sentence really zing, pop, and wow, you'll want to experiment with phrasing. Otherwise, your sentence is just going to lie there like a dead fish. It's going to stink like one, too. So what exactly is a phrase, and how do we use it to make our sentence awesome? Oh, snap. A phrase is really just a series of words you add to an otherwise boring sentence to add description, explanation, context, or color. Phrases are needy. They can't exist on their own. They need to be part of a sentence in order to survive. Total parasites. A phrase can also have a subject or a verb, but not both. If you're reading something with both, it's most likely a sentence. So take a sentence like, the cat ran. whoop de doo If we add a phrase, we can turn it into, the cat with the extraordinarily long tail ran. Still not a thrilling story, but at least we can clearly visualize this freakish animal. The cat with the extraordinarily long tail is what's called a noun phrase because it contains, yes, a noun. The noun being cat. Yeah, tail is a noun too, but the cat is the subject here. Because without the cat, we just have a tail floating in space, which would really drive the neighbor's dog crazy. Well, if there's a noun phrase, there must also be a verb phrase, right? Oh, you're so smart. If we turn our original sentence into the cat ran through the courtyard singing show tunes, we've once again made our sentence more interesting, except this time we're focusing on an action rather than on the physical description of a noun. So here our verb phrase is ran through the courtyard singing show tunes. We're guessing something from cats. Memory, na -na -na -na. Now what if we do something totally nutso and combine our noun phrase with our verb phrase? We get the cat with the extraordinarily long tail ran through the courtyard singing show tunes. Now that is one cat we'd like to get to know a little better. However, there's one more tool we can use to make our sentence even better. A clause. Like Santa. Put those away, cat. Other kind of clause. A clause actually can contain both a subject and a verb. But what makes it stand out is that it tells the reader a little something more about the subject than a basic skin and bone sentence. We could say, the cat ran, but he didn't make it to the bus on time. We don't have that detailed description of his tail, and we don't know if he was singing anything as he ran. But it's certainly more informative than, the cat ran. We know what you're wondering. Can we put together all three of these phrases to make the most incredible sentence of all time? You betcha. The cat with the extraordinarily long tail ran through the courtyard singing show tunes, but he didn't make it to the bus on time. Not only is this sentence insanely interesting, but it also contains a moral. Save your singing for the shower unless you want to be late for cat school. 
Having a knowledge of phrases and clauses in your back pocket will help you class up your sentences. It will make your work more fun to read, and quite honestly, more fun to write, too. Just don't have too much fun. You don't want your teacher to catch you enjoying yourself. Oh, sorry about that. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea there. I think it was a good uh, video to look at. So let's move on from here. Watch, it's going to go play again. I want to go out here. There we go. So when you're looking at phrases and clauses. We'll take the first one. When the class took the test, think to yourself, what would that be? Would that be a phrase or a clause? So I have class, which is a noun, the subject, and I have took, which is your verb, your predicate. So as a subject predicate, it's clause. Over the hills, right? I don't, I could say maybe hills, but there is definitely not a predicate. So uh, in looking at it, that's actually a prepositional phrase. You have your object, your preposition, hills, there's a phrase. Um, she stared at her phone. She is your subject, stares your predicate, subject predicate, that's a clause. To our neighbor's house. I have, house is a noun, could be the subject, but in actuality, again, it is a prepositional phrase and is the object of the preposition. Uh, two is being used as a preposition in this one. After the class, and this is one with those tricks, like some of those words can be a dependent clause marker, can be a prepositional phrase. After the class, all right, well, I have class, noun, is it a subject? Um, there's really not much there, and there is definitely no predicate, so that's a phrase, and that's actually a prepositional phrase. After we attend the meeting, we's a subject, attends, predicate, there's a clause. So that's where the difference lies. So you'll see in this following how clauses are used to create sentences and they add on to each other. The sun shimmered off of the lake. So I have subject, I have a predicate, and then I have a little bit more to it. You have sun is a subject, shimmer is your predicate. There's a good clause. While we ate our dinner, the sun shimmered off of the lake. While we ate our dinner, we have our Dependent clause. Remember, dependent clause, comma, independent clause. So um, while we ate our dinner, subject we, verb ate, there's a dependent clause, and it's followed by an independent clause. So that's how you build from a simple sentence. Now all of a sudden I have a complex sentence. The sun shimmered off of the lake, and Jean and I ate our delicious dinner. Now I have and combining these two independent clauses. Okay, the sun shimmered off the lake. Jean and I ate our delicious, delicious dinner. And so that's how you create a compound sentence with those two independent clauses. As Jean and I ate our delicious meal, the sun shimmered off of the lake and we stared lovingly into each other's eyes. Here is the coup de gras, the, the big sentence, the compound complex sentence. It starts off with a dependent clause. As Jean and I ate our, our delicious meal. So, Gene and I are subject, eight is your predicate. There's a dependent clause, comma. The sun shimmered off of the lake. That's sun and shimmered, subject predicate, makes sense. And it's combined with and. We stared lovingly into each other's eyes. So we is your subject, stared is your predicate, another dependent clause, independent clause. So two independent clauses in that dependent clause, I have a compound complex sentence. Finally, you see how it goes again. Amy gave Sarah tickets for the game. Independent clause right there. While they were at work, now I have your dependent clause, comma, Amy gave Sarah tickets for the game. So now I see how a complex sentence, a better sentence can be written. Amy gave Sarah tickets for the game, comma, but she is unable to go with her. So now all of a sudden I have my independent clause, comma, but other independent clause brought together, giving more information here. Um, and that would be a compound sentence, two independent clauses together. Amy gave Sarah tickets for the game, but she's unable to go with her because she has a prior commitment. Now, much better sentence, first of all, better developed. I have an independent clause starts off with Amy gave Sarah tickets for the game, comma, but she's unable to go with her as my other independent clause. And then because one of those markers, okay, because, because she has a prior commitment is my dependent clause. So I have my two independent clauses and my dependent clause use there. So that is where we are at with those. So I hope you guys can, uh, that, that's helpful. And um, again, if you have any questions, please let me know.